All right. So let's, let's, uh, let's jump in. Okay. You know, I'm Tish. You know, I'm at the, <laughs> the dojo in Burbank. Um, and this is the actor secret weapon. Let us proceed. Um, this, uh, share a little bit about me. Um, I am originally from Chicago. I've been, um, uh, voiceover pro in Los Angeles for 20 plus years, voice of Subaru for um, for the last seven years, voice of uh, Citibank for seven years before that, lots and lots of other campaigns. I work in all the genres and um, and uh, voiceover is my life. It's, it's uh, something that I love and something that I've made a living at um, for, all, for pretty much most of these 20 years. Like, you know, it took a little bit to get started in the beginning, but this is what I've done. Um, here is actually, uh, here's a little sample of my voice that you might have heard. Uh, let me, let's go. I love handling any situation I'm put in. I love going the distance and then some. I love when a good thing gets even better. I love my Subaru Forester. So um, I like to share. I like to share a little bit of what I do, so you know that I do what I do. Well, about eight years ago, um, it uh, began time to cross the threshold to teaching and share what I do, and share my love of what I do, and show others how to make this a way of life. So that was the VO Dojo it was created, and um, the VO Dojo has four parts to it. Um, it starts with the you should do voiceover intensive, comprehensive overview. If that sparks you, there's a full 14-month training program called From Mystery to Mastery, like going into full training, like if you were a boxer. Um, if, uh, for working pros, and as you come out and start entering the, the working pro world, we have the nth degree. Um, the Mystery to Mastery program is, is divided into four belt levels. So we have the, uh, when you finish, you're a black belt. And then as you enter the working pro world, you're an nth degree black belt. And that just continues on. And we, the fourth element of the dojo is the VO Dojo Pro Fight Club, which is our working pro workout that brings together top-notch talent with the decision makers who hire us. It's a fiercely friendly face-off that turns the audition process transparent. So this little taste that we're, that we're exploring here, opening up ideas of how, as a performer, we can add voiceover to um, our, um, our in entire portfolio, um, this is just a little taste, and all of this is here, and the methodology is here. So that's a little bit about me. Um, as I said, as we started the call, um, if you haven't already, um, would love to hear where you're calling from and where you are in your voiceover journey. So if everyone wants to do that in the chat as we're going along, um, want to move forward into the actual content. So um, as performers, right, and I'll just reiterate on this recording, something that I said, um, uh, this is called the actor's secret weapon. Um, and it could be called any performer, insert performer here, singer, um, singer, improviser, um, stand-up comedian, because it really, all of them have the same sort of um, uh, things that we deal with. <laughs> there's a dream and there's the reality, right? So, when we start these endeavors, um, we all feel like Pinocchio, like, and we're like, ah, oh, Jiminy, I'm going to be a, an actor. And then maybe depending on where you are or how long you've been doing it, there's inevitably a moment where you go, I'd rather be smart than be an actor. And um, we have to get through, we have to get through that, right? So um, what are some of the other realities, the realities of, of being an actor, right? Um, this is just a, a quick overview of some of the money-making possibilities, right? Um, if you're at the height of a theatrical career, um, these, are some, these are some opportunities that, um, you know, at a base level, you could be making. It's, it's a lovely way to make a living, and it's fantastic when you can get the work, 
right? Um, we'll just pro toss these out and let you take these in for a second. This is what we aspire to, right, as stage actors, right? Um, here in LA, we do it for love and we fight, <laughs> we fight for it for love. Um, here's, some, here's some figures for um, film and TV. You know, as, as the paradigms have shifted over the last, uh, you know, the last decade or so and continue to shift, how, how we get paid, how much we get paid, how much is union work, how much is non-union work is all shifting. So the, the money-making aspect and the realities of the money-making aspect of um, being a performer are as there's more possibility than ever and there are more challenges than ever in terms of how do you actually make a living. So the idea of this, of this webinar is really to open us up to the idea of diversification. Each, everyone used to, you know, it used to be that you could stay in your silo. And now really the idea of diversifying your acting income portfolio and how to activate all the revenue streams that your skills can be applied to is the idea here. So just opening your mind to how, what are all the ways that I can be making money with the skills I have as a performer? Um, so why, why voiceover? Why, why would that be one of the things that you'd want to have? Um, one of the things I'd like to do with this, uh, with this webinar is sort of address and uh, open up some of the myths, the myths about voiceover and, um, and open up the possibilities as well. So why voiceover? Well, voiceover is really one of the best jobs an actor can have because it can, it can fit in with everything else that you're doing. If you're on a set, you can figure out how to get your voiceover sessions in. If you're doing a play, you can figure out how to get your voiceover sessions in. You can get your auditions in. It's something you can be doing concurrently. Um, it is um, something that there's potential to make big money at. Um, it doesn't happen effortlessly, and you, you say you're a voiceover artist and then you make big money, but there's, there's potential to make a significant living out of, out of this, um, out of this genre of, uh, of, of performing. Um, more and more, you can do this from wherever you are. The advances in technology have been vast. The global marketplace and the need for voices in so many more contexts have expanded the opportunities. Um, and it's something that you can do for a long time. You can start this when you're a child and you can continue doing voiceover until you're much older, right? Um, you know, Frank Welker has been the voice of Fred and Scooby Too forever, forever. Um, so it, it can it can happen, right? Um, there's possibilities that are not limited by our physical look or um, or um, or age, right? So those are some some reasons to do it. Um, where do you find VO? A lot of times people, um, like I'll meet people and they're like, wait, well, what is that again? Like, what is it? It's, it's, it's a really interesting thing because voiceover is actually in the fabric of our everyday life everywhere. And when you open up your awareness, you start going, like, oh, 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 oh. So um, this, is, uh, this is a little glimpse of all the places that you can be making money um, doing voiceover. Um, there's many different genres, and if you look at this overview, um, you can see that there is probably somewhere where your voice and your skill set would really fit. So we have the, the realm of commercials, TV and radio, we have the realm of narration, and all its variations, audiobooks, documentaries, TV, industrial, TV narration, right? TV shows, industrials, audio tours, websites, instructional uh, narration, um, e-learning, explainer videos, all fit under that, corporate narration, medical narration, all of those are opportunities that you can explore and make money at. Um, there's the realm of announcer, um, live announce at events, um, 
promo and trailer, which are um, which are promoting uh, TV and film. Um, not on here is radio imaging. That's uh, working working to promote things on the radio. Um, obviously, the the world of animation, and that has. Um, you know, that is as, as competitive as ever, but there's more opportunities too. So feature and TV and web series. Um, the world of video games, vast, vast world. And as actors, um, a lot of where our storytelling is going is in this realm of uh, video games. And I'm going to add slash VR, virtual reality, right? So there's all of these places where this overlap is happening. Um, working to picture. As, as on-camera actors, you might have done this in the course of your work, um, doing ADR, um, replacing dialogue on after in post, um, looping, dubbing, voice matching. Um, all of these things are part of that working to picture or being a part of what happens in the storytelling afterwards, mm -hmm. with the voice. Um, and... Uh, there's the, the realm of the voice of things, right? Everything has a voice. Everything talks to you these days, right? Um, and then this realm of, of broadcast, webcast, I call, I call the, the cousin of voiceover because it's, it's related and the skills that are there um, uh, apply to voiceover. It's a little bit different realm. The podcast and audio drama are sort of in, in the realm of it. But what I want you to notice is how much there is, how many possibilities there are. And um, just off the top of your head, where would you, where would you place yourself or where would your heart place you? That's, that's a great question to ask. What do you want to do? What do you dream of doing? What would you love to do? Um, and um, here's another question. <laughs> well, how much does it put? And why, why, would you, why else would you like to do it? So we, we explored why... Um, in terms of access to it and how long you can do it. Why do it? Because there's so many places that you can do it. Um, and why do it? Because it, it pays money. It's, it's, it's a great way to, um, to complement and supplement your income. Um, Eric Lieb is a, a member of the dojo, and I loved this story that he shared um, uh, this, this was like getting a, 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 a minute by minute update, like here's what happened. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in a nutshell, the gist of this story um, was he, he did his work and then it started happening, right? And in three hours, he made as, about as much money as he made in his day job in four days. Um, so just a little glimpse of this. Um, let me, this is a little tiny, but um, let me um, show you here in terms of there's, there's union work and there's non-union work, right? And we're all, as performers, finding our way there and uh, um, understanding what the possibilities are. But um, in, terms of, in terms of doing, like, imagine a, 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 a session being an, un, an hour or less, and um, these are the basic fees that you get. Um, a radio spot is 262 in LA. It's $450 for a radio spot. A uh, television spot, $445. Um, doing promos, $234 each time you say coming uh, tonight, next, <laughs> next Thursday, right? That's $230. Um, and then each time the ad gets used somewhere else, like in, on a uh, there could be a cable buy that you get X amount of money or um, each, each session has its own fee. And then there's with union work, there's residuals as well. So every 13 weeks you get paid again. So this is just the start of, of what's possible um, in terms of union work. Um, Non-union work also is something that you can get going on your own. Um, and it can be something, uh, that not, you can build your, um, you know, if you, if you're doing three, if you're doing, um, three, um, sessions a day working in narration or, um, <clears throat> or stuff that you're getting yourself, 
that's $900 a day, right? So you start building it in different ways. Um, there's a whole bigger discussion about union and non-union work and why it's, what, what the pros and cons of, of both are, but that's, a, that's another discussion. I just want you to understand like how, how this can work, right? And what the possibilities are here. Um, oh, here's, here's, a, here's some narration, narration fees. Um, so if you're working on an industrial and you're um, work, working in a way that you can get the highest, you can command the highest uh, amount in non-union or non-jurisdictional place, um, for a two to five minute video, it could be $2,000, right? So these are just opening up the possibilities. Um, so let's, let's take a look at what is this? What, what is this? What is VO? Um, so by definition, uh, it is a piece of narration in a movie or broadcast not accompanied by the image of a speaker. Right? Now think back to that mind map and go, oh, oh yeah, I guess that, that applies, right? But the dojo, we like to get to the heart of everything. Like we just, we, the idea is to, to what is, where is the source of, of this coming from? So one of the hearts of, of voiceover, and this fits in with the whole money thing, is that voiceover is an art form that serves commerce. The great thing about that is, as you get your voiceover career going, then the commerce serves your art form, right? It, it dovetails and supports um, um, everything that you're doing. This is the real heart of voiceover. Um, and the, the core of everything that we do here at the dojo, come, it, 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 this is the source of everything, the foundation of the, of the curriculum. It's this idea that voiceover is communication and communication is an exchange of vibrational energy. That's it, that, it's, just, it's, it's just that simple. Um, when you take everything down to that level, then anything you do has another, um, has, a, has another depth and um, uh, it's simplicity, essential quality to it. And this is something, be, the, coming from this principle is, um, something why doing voiceover adds and complements and supplements what you're doing as an actor. A lot of times people are, people who are actors or pursuing their acting career um, will say, oh, well, I don't want to do voiceover because it's going to take away. It's going to diminish what I'm doing. It's going to di di um, disperse my focus, right? Um, and that is one way to think about it. Another way to think about it is how is it going to add and co complement and supplement? Um, one of these ideas, is, one, of this, one of the ways it does this is coming from this exchange of vibrational energy place. We open up what becomes the gradient of vulnerability. So if you think about the difference between being a stage actor than being just some person in the world who's not an actor, right? There's a level of vulnerability that we open ourselves into. Um, and uh, we use our body, our voice, our face, and our eyes to communicate that. In film, for the most part, the, the way that we're communicating here is, is a little bit different. And it's, it's another layer of vulnerability, right? To be in the moment on camera requires a, a different level of vulnerability. Now, voiceover, the microphone is even more sensitive than the camera. And all we have is our voice to convey all of this, right? So it's, it's, it's even more vulnerable sharing our truth um, when we're doing voiceover. For me, um, I'm a trained opera singer and have um, always felt that singing was even more vulnerable direct up to source <laughs> it's vulnerable in in connecting you with your power right the power of your voice um and then there's sex so if you think of this as the gradient of vulnerability and voiceover is somewhere in the middle here it's going to add to both of these both of these uh, all this whole thing is going to be enhanced working here um 
This is a quote from Ann Kenningeiser, who's one of our uh, amazing dojo members. Um, she did the full Mystery to Mastery program while she was on National Touring Company with Phantom of the Opera. But it's, uh, she found it to be a safe and nurturing program that teaches the technical, emotional, and intimate aspects of voiceover and experienced a renaissance in all of her acting, re reawakened love and passion for acting and desire to communicate honestly, clearly with joy and love. So that's been a fantastic journey. And she's, um, she's off the road, but doing, doing her voiceover work. Um, so here's a real question. Great. Yay. This is what it is. This is why we do it. Um, how? How do we get there? So I think one of the other myths, there's, there's like two ways that actors think about this. Um, either, um, oh, well, it's not that much different from what I already do. So, you know, it's just a thing that I'll like, kind of do as a side dish. That'll, that'll be fine. Um, how, how hard could it be? And in some ways that's true. And then there's also a mindset of like, oh my God, it's really hard to break into and it's really closed and there's only a few people doing it and you really have to know somebody and um, all of this all of this stuff that we uh, perpetuate as actors. So I um, just want to lay out what actually the natural progression is. So there's a natural progression from I don't know to working pro, right? Um, so as you see, I don't know, is here with question mark, working pro is here with money. So the initial progression is opening your awareness. That's what we're doing today, right? Um, opening your awareness. Um, the next step is exploring. Do, do you like what you hear? Let's, let's find out. Let's, let's joyously explore what it's about and learn how to do it. Um, then there's a, mo there's a layer of self-exploration. If exploration is finding out where the parties are, where the, where the uh, voiceover parties are, um, then self-exploration is figuring out what you're bringing to the party, right? This becomes your demo preparation. Um, then there's demo production, right? Um, this is creating the product that you're going to be able to um, bring to the world. Now, it's not just about having the product, it's about having the skills that are ready to enter the world right? Enter the, the realm. Um, and then um, next, after once you have this, then you integrate it, right? Integrate it into the world. And everybody's, everybody's integration is going to be different depending on that big mind map, right? Because each one of you has a different voice and different circumstances in your world and your location and your lives. And how that will unfold for each of you is going to be different. And then uh, there's expansion. So it's, it's not about culmination, it's about we get to here and then there's the next level and that just continues on going. Um, now in, in the dojo, we break down this natural progression into taking the martial arts metaphor, we break it down into belt levels. So there is a, there's a curriculum that builds, that lays down foundations and then builds and develops um, each of these, each of these uh, skill sets and next layer of nuance and understanding so that by the time you are complete, you complete your brown belt and if st stepping out in the world as a black belt, you have all of this readiness. You're, you're ready to, to um, enter the world as, as a working pro. Um, and this yellow belt, yellow belt to brown belt is the Mystery to Mastery program. The you should do voiceover is the white belt. We, we take these little ideas and expand them and, and uh, give you a comprehensive overview. So wh whoever you are, wherever you are, hold on, let me go back here. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you're somewhere on this journey. And um, the idea of the dojo is how can we help you get to where you want to be? Um, no matter who you are, where you are, at some point you're going to have to explore all of these things um, to really make it all the way, to, to, to know you always have everything you need in whatever circumstances as, as a voiceover artist, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, so what does it take? Like I said, people have a lot of, of preconceptions, either that it's, it's sitting around eating bonbons and you don't really have to do anything or that it's super, super hard. And the truth is, 
uh, somewhere in between there. <laughs> it is it is a really lovely way of life, you know, that you can you can work from home and you do make your own schedule in some ways, um, and you can you know you can develop that. Um, and it's uh, like I don't I don't like to um, I don't like to blow smoke. Um, <laughs> the reason this is this is based on a martial arts is is that it does require it is it is intense. Um, I like to use this metaphor of boxing, right? Um, if someone came to you and said, uh, people tell me all the time, um, I should be a professional boxer, what should I do? You know what you need to do, right? You, you have an idea of what is required to get reach that level. So just like a boxer, um, these are the things that it takes to um, to really lay the foundations for your sustained successful voiceover career, right? So the five things are decision. Um, nobody cares if you do this or not. And um, you don't, it doesn't just happen. You have to make a decision to do this. Um, mindset. At the dojo, internal training is equally, if not more important than the external training, right? especially because of that exchange of vibrational energy thing. Um, technique, you need tools, you need to know how to do this and how to approach it and how to bring everything that you're bringing to this medium. So what are your tools? Then, just like anything else, you have to apply it, right? How, how do you get the hours in? How do you have the experience of taking these ideas and making them something that is second nature and part of what you do? you apply it. And the reality is just like a boxer never, it doesn't go to the bout in Vegas um, or get to the bout in Vegas alone, right? There's a whole team of support that, that gets you there. Um, this, is, this is not something that you do alone. You, it's always just you, but you never do it alone, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So um, decision. Nobody casually finds themselves on the top of K2. You have to make a conscious effort to get there, and it may be challenging, right? Um, the idea of the dojo is, if, this, if the top of this is a sustained, successful voiceover career, that wherever you are from sea level to summit, um, that you will need a certain amount of skills to get to there. Now, a helicopter might come and take you up um, to a certain level, but you may not be a skilled mountaineer to be able to get up the next mountain or, contain, or continue that, right? So sustained successful career is the goal here. Um, mindset. Uh, as I said, it's an essential part of what we do here. Um, what we're thinking and, and how we're thinking about things um, affect everything. So I want to share real fast uh, some of the um, mindset tools that we use at the dojo. I'm going to breeze through these really fast, but if you're interested, um, let me know in the chat after I do this. Um, I'm happy to send you a PDF that has these, uh, these ideas in a, in a way that you can, you can share them because I'm going to go through them. Um, so here's the mindset. Um, the first, we have the rules of the dojo and the rules of voiceover. These are the things you be. Rules of the dojo are how you be and how you approach the work. The rules of voiceover are things you do as you're doing the work. So, first rule of the dojo, focus. Know what you want, ask for it. People will give it to you if you allow. Second rule of the dojo, leave your inner critic outside the booth. Positive self-direction. Third rule of the dojo, confidence. Know you can do it even though you've never tried. Fourth rule of the dojo, excellence. We are essential and we are expendable. There's no room for mediocrity. Does that mean you won't hear a grab ass mattress ad? No, but we are training to the highest levels, right? Um, and the fifth rule of the dojo, cultivate beginner's mind. Determination, humility, curiosity. Oftentimes at the beginning of the journey, it feels like such a struggle and everything's hard. It's really a very, very empowered, empowering time where everything's possible and you're hungry and ready to do, you're, 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 you're just open to it all, right? So it's a very powerful time. Um, 
let's see, rules of voiceover. Um, the rules of voiceover, as I said, these are the things you do every time you step up to the mic. So here's the rules of voiceover. Share your truth. Share your truth. Trust your voice. And again, trust your voice. Keep energy moving forward within the piece of copy, as we'll talk about, and in everything you're doing. What else, what else are you doing? How are you keeping things moving forward? Um, and listen carefully. This is an oral medium. So honing in on what we hear and how we hear and um, hearing both just the, just the um, auditory, right? But then how are we hearing on this exchange of vibrational energy level, right? Listening carefully. And it's the most important if you take nothing away from this, <laughs> but this playing fully. And this is play fully, because if you're not, the person who's getting the job is, and playfully. It's so much fun. Doing this work is not work. It's so much fun. It's joyous. It's wonderful. Um, so it's an amazing, amazing thing. So rules of, rules of the dojo, rules of voiceover. Um, as I said, if you want to put in the chat, if you're interested in getting the PDF of, um, of the rules, just uh, type right now, um, uh, type right, right there um, your uh, the rules and we'll... Uh, We'll touch base with you and, and, and uh, get that to you. Or we'll send it out to everyone who's signed up. How about that? That's easier. But let me know you're interested. Okay, so we had decision, mindset, and then the idea of technique. Okay? Um, so I want to introduce you to some of the basic, a basic tool set that we use at the dojo um, every single day. Every single day and I invite you to, to use it as a foundation. Um, so first of all, before we step up, before we step up into this realm, um, before we step up to the mic to do the work, I like to talk about entering the zone. In martial arts, we, um, when, you, when you enter the dojo, you take your shoes off, and when you, when you enter to do, start doing the work, you enter the mat, you enter the working area, and you bow in, acknowledging that you're moving into the place where the work is going to begin, where the transformation is going to happen, where something's going to happen. Um, and then when you leave, you bow out. So if you can create this, um, this um, place, you step in, and it allows you to get your bearings, release everything else that is outside of you, and step in to the zone. Um, I like to call it entering the sacred yes space because this is where everything's possible. When you release everything else and um, open yourself up to what can happen, this becomes your sacred yes space. I like to think of it like um, entering a room that's just covered with post-its that says yes, 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 right? Um, excellent. So we've created this Zen bubble. We've stepped into our sacred yes space. Now, I want to introduce you to a couple of tools that some of the fundamental tools that we use at the dojo. Um, I introduce tools because they're going, you are creating your toolbox. So you can see how these fit. We'll show you how they work. Um, and then you see how they fit into your toolbox, right? Okay. So here's one of the, here's, here's the concept. So this concept is called the braid of analysis. Okay. Think of a braid, three strands. Uh, intertwine evenly and equally, right? So if you think of three strands that are your tools, the middle one, and I won't, I won't put it up, I won't put it like that because that's a different thing. The middle one is connection, right? The middle one is connection. This one is logic, one is logic, and one is energy, okay? So we've got these three strands, and as you, you analyze each separately, and then understand that they will be equally evenly intertwining to create the take that you that you're to, as you do your work right so let's look at each one individually um, the first one is connection each of these strands think of having two plies the first one in connection is 
find what resonates with you. So as you're looking through the copy, find every idea that resonates with you. How do you really feel about it, right? Um, sometimes I work with people like on McDonald's commercials and, and then they'll, they'll say, oh, uh, I'll say, how do, well, how does that resonate with you? And they'll be like, I'm loving it. I'm like, really? Really like you take your kids to McDonald's and they're like, oh, no, no, no. I would never, I would never take my kids to McDonald's. I don't believe in McDonald's. I think it's the downfall of Western civilization. I'm like, okay, so you're not loving it. <laughs> Right, right. Um, so, uh, what then do you love? What does resonate with you? And how do you talk with that? So, in actors' terms, it's substitution. Um, and the idea is how can we make sure that, that this is happening? So, we find everything that resonates with, with us. And then, as this is an exchange of vibrational energy, we want to talk about who are we sharing it with, right? So you know what it means to you. Now, who would you share this with? You want to pick one specific person that you know in real life. Um, so that allows everything that you know about that person to come into the connection that you have. So um, you may choose uh, one friend or one brother. Like Let's say you choose your brother and share the copy with, with your brother. And then you choose your second brother or your, your sister or something else, right? Or your cousin, two different relationships, two different dynamics, two different uh, interactions of people. So when you are specific with choosing one or the other and are really connected up, then we get all of that experience of, of, of your relationship without knowing anything, without having anything in place. Okay, so that's connection. Um, let's see. We uh, find what resonates for you and who you're sharing it with. Now, um, in terms of working on the copy, read down for connection, right? Go through it. When you get to the bottom, we're going to pull on the logic thread. So the two strands of logic are, what are you talking about and how are you saying it? Right? So this is figuring out what is the function, what, what, is the, what is the general idea, what is the function of each paragraph, each sentence, and then how does it add up? Is there some form that it takes? Is there some structure that you find? Is there some repetition? How are you saying it, right? So mostly, what are you talking about? Because if you don't know what you're talking about, I'm not going to know what you're talking about. So we read up for logic. Um, we can go um and then um whoops here we go and then the third thing is energy so how much energy does it take to deliver this message right um you can think of it like which ski hill would you would you go down right which ski which ski run would you have to go down to deliver this to deliver this message um if it's for a, a baby shampoo commercial you would just need like a little a little bunny hill in your yard right? You don't even need a ski hill. Like you just need a slope, right? Um, if it's a regional car sales ad, um, one day only event, then you're going to need, it's, it's the Toyota red, red, it's the Toyota red tent one day only sale, right? It's coming up. It's happening. So you need more energy there. Um, and then the second part of the braid of analysis or the energy thread is finding the current. How do you keep the energy moving forward smoothly? If you've ever seen anyone do parkour, um, you want to think about that happening, the physicality of energy always moving forward um, is what we want to have in mind. So um, let's see, where are we for time? We started late, so I think we have a little bit more time. Um, let's see how we can do this. I want to show you how this can work. Um, so how you can apply this, right? And um, so I want, I want each of you to do this, do this while we're working here. I'm going to work through my process and um, using just connection. I'm going to show you one example of how this works. Um, so this is copy for Pinnacle Bank, right? Um, and there's all sorts of information that I'm gathering from, from, from this, but let's, let's just look at the story and I'm going to pull on the connection thread. 
All right. So I'm going to read down this and um, I'm going to figure out what resonates for me. Okay. So um, I see, um, well, first of all, I see um, Colorado, Nebraska, Wyoming, and Georgia. So this is a bank spot for those places. So I'm going to go, oh, I used to live in, in Colorado. I kind of know what, what that culture is. I kind of know what that, that feel of that, of that um, place is and what people, what's on people's minds and how they roll. So I'm going to take that in, right? Now, backyard. Um, I grew up in the city of Chicago. So backyard was sometimes like kind of a little, little thing. <laughs> Um, but, um, my grandparents had an amazing backyard. Um, they had, a, they had a house sort of on the outskirts of the, of the city. And so for me, backyard is my grandpa's place where the grass was trimmed perfectly and tomato plants grew always and there were peonies and, um, and in the summer we had a little kiddie pool and, um, the neighbor's house was was not separated by a gate or by a fence. Um, so those, those are things like, oh, backyard, right? Um, so I'm going to go uh, down. This is the backyard where the neighborhood kids came to play. So I'm going to think, okay. Oh, wait, so maybe it's not my grandpa's because we didn't play with the other kids there. Um, I'm going to think about the kids that I went to. Uh, nursery school with, an elementary school, right? So that's um, Fran and Inga and Morgan. And so you see, as I'm, as I'm getting really specific about each of these kids, right? Oh, David, David Greco. <laughs> um, then it, it just comes to life and I'm resonating with it, right? And the dog. So my dog was named Short Stuff. She was a little Samoyed. Um, and you know, there, there I can connect up with the tomato patch. You see how this is going? So what I want you to do is just take time and find each element that resonates with you. Um, so I guess when you're doing this, you can try it, you know, like just, just sort of try it as if you're just you know, generally sharing it. And then try it. Like getting really, really specific about what each of these things mean to me. Now, on a bigger level, I also can look at the first line and go, bank. How does bank resonate with me? Um, you know, I bank at the, I bank at the SAG after credit union and it feels like, you know, um, I'm part of something and it's small and um, people for the most part take care of each other and they have good things. You know, it's, it's a, it's a, a community thing in my community. So I have, I have a pretty good relationship with them. Um, so for me, banking is kind of okay, but you know, in general, the banking industry, um, I might have some thoughts and I'm like, well, that's kind of not in everyone's best interest or, hmm, or God, if, if Wells Fargo does one more damn thing, right? So you have to figure out where, where that whole concept is, right? Um, Let's say, is that making sense? So, so I want you guys to do to to explore this idea of what's resonating. Now, who are you sharing this with? We talked about this a little bit. Choose one specific person that you know in real life. So, if I share this with my brother, who also knew these same kids, right? That would be one experience. If um, if I share it with someone who um, grew up in New York. There wasn't a backyard, right? That 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 might be different. So I might talk about it differently. Like, oh, did you know this? Did you have this? Um, uh, yeah. So so you know, and what's going to who who would be interested in talking about this, right? Um, and it could be as could be as literal as um, it could be as literal as who do I know who hates their bank, right? That's someone I could share this with. Oh, let me tell you the story about my bank. So awesome. So, so takes care of you. So feels like home. So feels like a history and we believe in people, right? Um, so that's the idea of that. Uh, let's see. Um, I want to show you how this logic tool works. 
and you guys can play with it. So here's how the logics tool goes. So we read down for connection, right? And who are we sharing it with? Then we read up for logic. So um, if you come down to the last line of a piece of copy, that's called the tagline. And that's usually the distillation of the message, right? This is where we're getting to. All roads lead to this. Everything that's here is leading to this. So um, this tagline is, it's the perfect mix to please every cat, right? So this logic tool, read one line up and see how it attaches to the tagline. The flavors of real white, white meat, chicken, and salmon, it's the perfect mix to please every cat. Now, I'm not, I'm not making anything happen here. I'm just going, oh, okay. So it has this and this, and that's a perfect mix, and it pleases every cat. Then we go one line up. So this product has a crunchy outside and a meaty, tender, meaty center. That is why it's the perfect mix to please every cat. That's our mixed bag of personalities. So you might need something that is a perfect mix so all of your finicky cats can do it, right? So, oh, I see. We start with this premise, and this is where we're getting to. This is how we get there, okay? And then we have the layers of what's your relationship with cats. That's, you know, the connection thread is already pulled. And so now we go, oh, okay, this is what I'm saying. So um, you can play around with that tool, going one line up and coming back to the tagline. Um, and then there's energy right? So how much energy is needed? So this is, um, what is the tone? Um, and how much energy is needed to deliver this, right? Um, so here we have a, 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 a sort of buffet restaurant. So a family style restaurant that has a certain energy and ambiance of it. And the excitement of an offer that is like, uh, amazing how much food you get, how much yummy food you get for so little price, right? And for certain days. So there's an urgency, there's specificity, and maybe an excitement that you want to share about this. So we pull on the, we pull on the connection thread to, um, to uh, figure out what, where that actually resonates, right? Because we don't want to generate, we don't want to generate excitement. You guys, this is so exciting. I'm not connected to anything I'm saying, but it sounds kind of like I'm excited, right? So we want it to be like, oh my God, you guys, when you, when you, ta when you understand the, the power of this energy tool, you're going to be able to look at any piece of copy and just be able to go, oh, boom, I know exactly how much energy that needs, and then be able to calibrate it, right? So that's me genuinely excited, right? Um, so this is, this is one of the ways that you can do, you, you use this energy um, uh, and figure out what is needed and how you can create variations with it. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, is this all making sense? Um, Let's see, I'm trying to find where everybody's at, and I haven't seen the chat, so if you've had questions, hopefully. Let's see, I don't want to change anything because of the, okay. Um, yeah, is everyone, is everyone with me? Um, excellent. I'm, I'm going to open it up for, for questions um, in a second and uh, share. So, but let's finish this up, and then I'll come back and, and ask your questions. It's, it's really good. Um, so. Just coming back full circle, what does it take? Decision, mindset, technique, right? We explored the tool. These are the tools, and then how do you apply them, right? And support. So as I said, um, it's always just you, but you never do it alone. And as performers, we know this more than anything. A lot of the reasons that we want to be performers is because we never do it alone, right? There's that collaborative effort, that making things together, depending on what your, um, depending on what your uh, genre, or what your uh, medium is, right? So um, this is this is what the dojo is here for. Um, we guide, support, connect, and accelerate you every step of the way from I don't know to working pro. So all during this journey, um, we create a place where you don't have to do it alone and you, um, 
can go faster and fuller and deeper and stronger because you're doing it together. So that's, that's the whole idea of here. Um, and it's been lovely because there's people from all walks of, of creativity that, uh, that are part of the dojo, all ages, all places, all, um, all experiences. Um, David Varela, I'll let you read his, he's, he's a, he came to the dojo when he was 23 and um, he signed with DPN, one of the top agencies in the city as a non-union actor um, in, in LA. Um, Mariana uh, is from Venezuela. She had been a TV producer in Venezuela and um, uh, had left her own creative pursuits. And uh, when she's, as, as part of the dojo, she came to the dojo because it was her time to do, to do her stuff. And she's back in Florida now and um, doing amazing things. Um, Tom Provost is a film editor and an amazing uh, cinema educator. Um, he, he brought up all of his skills from that and is bringing it into his, his voiceover, all the realms of the, of the visual and, and the storytelling skills, right? Um, so we're coming to the conclusion of this, <laughs> of this uh, exploration. Um, and uh, hopefully, have you, hopefully you have a sense of, of how this is um, something that can become your secret weapon. So let's, let's ask this question. Um, so why, why do VO? Um, simply, love and money. And I think as artists, sometimes we have a hang up about this money part. And I just want to say that um, the wonderful thing about voiceover is that it's a place where it's really okay to make money and to expect to make money and um, to make, you know, figure out how to get your voiceover career going. So you're making consistent money and then you can do whatever the heck else you want as a performer, right? It'll complement and supplement. Notice who all does voiceover these days, my friend, right? Samuel Jackson does voiceover. <laughs> um, John Hamm does voiceover. Um, people do voiceover, and you can too. Um, people who are successful actors. Um, so that's, that's the main things. Um, why do voiceover? Voiceover requires that you be nimble-minded. It's going to open your mind and expand your mind, make your mind faster and, and, and just more nimble in every way. Voiceover requires that you be open-hearted. As we talked about the gradient of vulnerability, it, um, it opens you up. And as you find your truth and, and your voice, um, opens you up in ways that you might not have gone to before. <laughs> um, Focused in action. As I said, this does not happen casually. <laughs> if you want this, you can get it, but it does not happen casually. So um, it gives you something really specific to go after um, and go get. Um, it requires you to be unstoppable in spirit. It's so much fun doing this work, you guys. It's so much fun and, and exciting and lovely and um, joyous. <laughs> it's, wonder, it's, it's, really, it's really a fantastic thing. And the more you can bring this, I left my, left my meeting with my agents and yesterday. I was like, yeah, we're doing this, man. It's so fantastic. Let's see what we can do. Um, it allows you to be available to overflowing abundance. There's just possibilities. You can get paid for doing what you love. You can get paid for saying words. It's, it's, uh, there, there's, there's many, many possibilities. Um, and ready, ready for endless uh, abundance, abundance, once again, the money, and then ready for endless possibilities. Um, all of those things, all of those things that were on that where you find voiceover, It's possible that you could be making money. You could be exploring all of those. Do you have to do all of them? Do you do all of them at once? No, that's what we, that's why we talk about at the dojo, right? We hone in on that. But it's possible that you have a day where you're doing a promo and then an animation thing and then have uh, run in for the commercial spots and uh, it'd be a busy, busy ass day, but you know, or, or, you know, and then the next day you have a looping session or something like that. There's no reason that you can't do all of those things. So, um, 
So uh, can you get to questions in a second? I just want to share what's next. Um, if this little taste has intrigued you, um, the next step would be um, stepping into the you should do voiceover intensive. Um, we do the intensive uh, quarterly. We do a six week virtual version that's coming up and starting on September 21st. Um, and we also do a live intensive weekend in November. So if you like doing things live and in a really like boom, let's do it way um, and want to fly out to Los Angeles or you're in Los Angeles, come join us then. Um, and wherever you are, you can join us for the six week virtual intensive that starts um, that starts uh, September 21st. So um, that's that um, for being here and especially for your um, lovely um, rolling with uh, lovely rolling with the um, technical difficulties. <laughs> so for being here today, um, the you should do voiceover intensive is usually four ninety seven. And if you are interested in joining us for either the virtual or the live weekend, um, if you sign up uh, today, now, <laughs> during this, during this, uh, during this uh, event, during this, as we're, as we're taking questions and exploring questions, um, uh, use the, you can go to the website, uh, www.thevodojo.com. Let me uh, put that in the chat somehow. Where's my cursor? Ah. So I'm just going to say it slowly again, www.thevodojo.com. Uh, click on this guy or this guy um, and um, put in the code DOJO100, capital D-O-J-O 100, and we'll give you $100 off. So if you touch base with us, if you sign up for this today, um, this, uh, this $100 off is available to you. Um, and I know as performers, sometimes having a big old chunko change that much is not possible. So there are options to uh, do payments as well because we want everyone to jump in and start this journey. Um, so we you know, try and make it as possible as possible. Um, other things, uh, if uh, the first Wednesday of every month, we do a free webinar called Ask the Sensei, where you can ask questions about anything. And that's a wonderful blend of everyone from every level. And um, if you're interested in talking more, if you have, like, we'll, we'll do a couple of questions, you know, we'll, do, we'll take some questions here um, for a little bit. Um, but if you want a little, if you have other questions and want to talk, um, you can sign up for a voiceover once over call um, with me or one of our team members. Um, I'm going to be in New York this week, so I want to make sure that you're talking to somebody as soon as possible. Um, and uh, if you go to bit.ly slash vo hyphen once over dot com, you can find uh, a time on the calendar for that. Um, and if you spark to what we're talking about here, want to stay in touch, here are the ways that you can do that. Um, so yeah, um, what questions do you have, guys? Yeah, actually, you know what? Let's do this. Um, you guys have been on here longer than expected. Thank you so much for coming. Um, if you have questions, um, why don't you email them to me um, at tish at the vodojo.com and um, I will get back to you on that. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I am so excited that you're here and look forward to hearing everyone's voices and um, We'll talk to you as soon as we can. Thanks. Bye.